nice to see you here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the conference. And today I would like to have an introdu introductionary talk about uh, monitoring and administering salt cloud clusters. So first of all, something about me. Uh, I'm a search consultant and engineer at Sematext. Uh, I also happen to be a co-founder of Salt PL. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that. If you uh, seek some information about solar, you can take a look there. I'm also a father of two great kids and a husband, and I happen to write a few books, two about the Apache Solar and two about Elasticsearch. Uh, Let's start with the basic concepts about uh, the cloud. Mm, as you know, or you may not, uh, the solar cloud, the basic idea about the cloud is to have your solar distributed uh, among multiple nodes. So uh, in, a, in general, you have a multiple solar servers that uh, create a cluster. On solar servers, you, say you have a collection. A collection is a logical, uh, some kind of logical index uh, that you have, you put the data to. Mm, a collection is uh, composed of shards. Each shard can be either a leader or a, re or a replica. Uh, when your application sends data to mm, the cloud, to the salt cloud, uh, solar automatically uh, roads the data to the one of the leader shards. It takes the, by default, it takes the ID of the document, in calculates the hash based on that, of, on that ID, and then it chooses which shard it go to. After that, uh, when the document is, is in shard, it's sent to its replica uh, so that you can have multiple uh, this copies of the same document in order to serve more queries and to have uh, more uh, availability and not to fail when a single shard fails. The same happens when a second document came, it's, it doesn't matter to which shard it goes because SOAR will automatically route the document to a proper shard. And then, of course, it goes to uh, its replica, not only a single one, but it, you can have multiple replicas uh, of that. However, in order to uh, create a SOAR cluster, we usually start with local development. So we need to create a simple cluster uh, that is built of a single node, but still works uh, like usual clusters, right? So in order to do that, we use a simple command. Uh, we can so-called bootstrap the configuration. We just use the bootstrap config parameter to say solar which configuration directory it should use to send the um, the configuration to Zookeeper, to Zookeeper, I'll tell about Zookeeper later, but what you need to know, uh, to know right now is that the configuration is needs to be stored somewhere, not on Solar. Then we need to pass the con configuration name. We tell Solar to run Zookeeper, the embedded Zookeeper that's provided with Solar with ZK run. We specify the number of shards and we start Solar. Basically, what it's, what's happening is Solar runs embedded Zookeeper, it starts a, co a collection with a single shards, and Solar is started. And you can use it like you would have a, uh, a bigger cluster. However, in production, that's not, not sufficient because you don't want to start uh, each server like this. Let's imagine that, we've, uh, that we have a cluster there, uh, and a Zookeeper ensemble. And now, what's a Zookeeper ensemble? Uh, in order to solve cloud to operate, it needs a Zookeeper. It's a mm, Apache product, it's called like this, that's, uh, well, mm, that's uh, solar use to manage the cluster state, configurations, uh, choose the leaders, and do all the syncing. So uh, what we need to do is we start a cluster and we point it, each solar server, to the Zookeeper ensemble, just like this. We specify the ZK host and we post, uh, point it to one of the Zookeeper, Zookeeper servers we have al available um, and installed. One thing to remember is that uh, in order to have high availi availability, sorry, uh, we need to have at least uh, um, three Zookeepers. Zookeeper uh, needs a quorum to operate. A quorum is at least 50% plus one server of Zookeeper. So 
uh, you can imagine you can have a single Zookeeper server, but if it fails, your cluster uh, stops working. If you have three Zookeeper servers, you are allowed to uh, have one failed, and your cluster will still be operable. operatable. Uh, if you have five Zookeeper servers, you can allow, you are allowed to have two failed nodes, and so on. Rem the point to remember is that an even uh, now you should have an even number of uh, Zookeeper servers, and that you need at least 50% plus one of them uh, in order for your cloud cluster to be uh, working. Now, what to do to create a configuration? First of all, when we uh, did a local setup, the one node one cluster, we've used bootstrapping, but we don't want to do that uh, every day. Uh, what we do is we use the provided, for example, the provided uh, scripts that are in the cloud scripts directory of the example uh, deployment that uh, Solar provides, and we use the zkcli.sh uh, script to upload the configuration. We specify the cmd command, uh, which, is, which should be upconfig, that tells the script to upload our configuration. Uh, we have the zk host, uh, which we point to one of our Zookeeper servers. We specify the configuration directory and the, co and the configuration name. The name of, of uh, under which our configuration will be seen. And the configuration dir is the all the files that Solar needs to operate. So there will be a schema, there will be a Solar config, and all the additional things that you need to work. For example, synonyms file, stop words, and all of that. What happens is that that configuration will be stored in Zookeeper, and when you create a collection or change it, again, by uploading it, Solar will be able to read it. Let's see how it, uh, how it works, but first. We have a collection API to manage the collections. We can create them, we can delete them, that's usual. We can reload them, so if your data or your configuration changes, for example, if you want to change the caches, if you want to change uh, anything in solar config on, or in schema, you don't have to delete the collection and again create it, you can just reload it. We can split the collections, which I'll show how, how it works, which basically allows us to split existing chart into two shards and this way create more shards of existing collections. We can create aliases and delete them if we, have, if we want to operate on a single name but uh, the collections will be changing. Radu will tell something about uh, right after me. And we can create and delete uh, particular shards when using not explicit routing, not the default one. Not the default one. Uh, you can so read more about all the parameters for all those uh, commands on uh, solar week. Ah, basic, how to create a collection. Uh, first of all, we need to upload it, but we did that already, and now what we do is we run a command to the admin collections uh, handler, and we say that we want to use an action create, which creates a collection. We want it to give it a name, it's called revolution. We want it to have three shards and have a replication factor of four. And now let's stop for a bit here. That num shards parameter tells Solar that the collection should be divided into three shards, into three physical shards. Uh, you can the shards all. Uh, if you are familiar with master slave architecture in Solar, uh, back before 4.0 and the cloud, uh, it basically means that three uh, cores will be created on your cluster. Uh, however, the replication factor. Uh, tells us, in, ad in addition to that, tells Solar how many physical copies of each shard should be created. So after this command, uh, if the cluster is uh, capable of creating that much, we would have 12 shards. That means that we multiply the num shards parameter and the replication factor. However, one thing to remember that in Solar 4.0, uh, the replication factor was uh, mm, specifying the number of additional uh, shards in addition to the leader ones. Not only, not only, uh, not the old shards, but uh, the replicas ones. And from, uh, starting from 4.1, uh, it specifies the total number of shards. Mm. We, uh, in the create command, we have the following parameters. We have the name, the collection name under which uh, it should be uh, visible. The num shards we talked about, replication factor, 
max shards per node, uh, which defaults to one, and tells Solar how many shards of the same collections are allowed to be placed on the same uh, no, uh, Solar Cloud node. By default, Solar will, tr will only allow a single shard of the collection to be placed on the node, but sometimes it's not desired. Uh, you can imagine that for right now you have four nodes, you know that you want replicas, you want to have replicas and you want four shards, then uh, you can create additional shards, uh, specify the max shards per node to a higher number than one, and add nodes during time and Sol will handle. The create node set allows us to define nodes on which the, collect, uh, the shards will be placed. If we don't want to place the shards on all the nodes, uh, we just specify the um, IDs of IP addresses of the uh, nodes we want to place the collection on and Solar will place, create the node, the, the indices there. And finally, the collection config name is the name of the configuration we want to use and we should use it if the configuration name is different from the name we specified in the, uh, in the command. Now, I've told about splitting. Imagine a situation like this that you have a collection and you see that your servers are stressed out. The indexing is not going well. Uh, you just can't keep, your machine just can't keep up. And the re-indexing is not an option because one option that, uh, that you have is just create another collection with mm, more shards, uh, index, re-index the data from scratch and uh, you're done. However, that's not always the option. Uh, you, and Solar give us the possibility of splitting the shards already of already created collection and dividing a single shard into two. What we need to do is, uh, uh, let's start with a simple example that will create a uh, collection with two shards. Uh, after uh, running a command like this, we should see, uh, this is a f from Solar admin uh, from the cloud view. Uh, you see that we have a collection, collection named collection one, we have two shards, they are placed on the same machine but different, uh, different solar uh, instances running there. Um, after we run the split shard command uh, on the collection, you can see the action is split shard, the collection, we give the collection name and we specify which shard we want to divide. After that command, our uh, collection will look like this. You can see we still have the shard one, but it's empty. We have this shard two, which, was, which wasn't touched at all, and we have two additional shards, 1.0 and 1.1. Those new shards will have the data <coughs> that was uh, present in, the sh in shard one, but Solar will divide the data more or less evenly uh, and sp split the information in the cluster state that is uh, stored in Zookeeper. It will divide the shards, um, the IDs of the documents that were, were the shard, were, which should be put in one and one and uh, one O shard and one one. And from that point, you can, you can delete the shard one and just continue with your collection. However, one thing to remember about is that this operation is heavy. Mm. Solar needs to rewrite the index into two uh, new shards, right? Because if you, a single shard is small in losing index and it needs to be re rewritten. All the caches will be invalidated. IO will be stressed out if your collection is big. Mm, and this operation shouldn't be done uh, every day. So you need to mm, think about how many shards you want uh, before creating collections actually. But in terms of uh, uh, emergency and if you really need it, do we have the possibility and it's very nice to be honest. In addition to that, uh, the collection API is built on top of the core admin API. Uh, so we can use the core admin to create shards ourselves. If we want something like this and we want the full control over what is going on on the, on the cluster, we, want, we may use the uh, core admin. It, ha it can uh, take the parameters like collection, which is a collection name, the, the shard, which is the actual ID of the shard we are creating, the total number of shards collection should have, and of course the co collection config, config name, which specifies the, uh, the collection name. Mm, to be honest, you won't uh, use the uh, core admin API uh, re 
very much, but it's useful sometimes. Ex uh, explicit, explicit routing, for example. Uh, okay, let's stop here. I won't talk about routing, so let's not uh, talk about it. Just remember, you can use it, and sometimes it's useful, uh, especially when you need full control over what's happening. In addition to that, when trying to manage your clusters, you sometimes need uh, sometimes needs uh, in need of uh, reading and writing schema. Mm, your index is probably not static. Mm, it will change over time. So uh, from Sol 42, we've got we've got the ability to read uh, information from the schema dynamically. We can read information about fields, the dynamic fields, types, copy fields. Uh, from 4.3, uh, some additional information is avail available, like the name version, unique key, and of course the similarity is defined. However, with Solar 4.4, we've, we've got the ability to actually write the schema. Uh, we can add new fields, and we can add copy fields. Uh, to read schema, nothing, nothing is actually needed in terms of configuration, you just, po you just point uh, your browser on, or a call request to a proper uh, uh, request handler. Uh, in, in SOLAR it's called schema fields, and you specify the field name, and what you get in response is a JSON that uh, has the information about the field. For example, here we have the name of the field, which is name, uh, its type, is it indexed, and is it stored. Simple as that, sometimes useful if you are building a UI with, uh, for example, a schema wizard or something like that. Mm, you can read about the schema API uh, 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 on SolarWiki also. Uh, in order to modify the schema, some information must be present in the solar config file. First of all, you need to define the schema factory. There are two schema factories currently, uh, the managed index schema factory that allows us to manage the schema dynamically. Uh, in such case, you shouldn't uh, modify the schema uh, by yourself uh, without uh, the use of the schema API, because uh, that will mess up, mess up things. What we need to do, uh, and there is, sorry, and there is another, the static, uh, uh, the classic index schema factory, which uh, is just uh, what, what was available from the start in Solar. Uh, so you can modify the schema by hand. Anyway, let's, let's get back to this. And with the managed index schema factory, uh, we have two parameters. First of all, we need to set the mutable to true, so Sol will be able to write to it. And then we need to specify which schema we want to mm, write to. So this is the name of your schema. It's managed schema like in the example uh, deployment, but if your schema is named differently, you need to adjust it. Now, if you will use a simple command that, for example, to add a new field, we point it to schema fields and the name of the, the, name of the field, and we can uh, inform us all which type, which type of field we want. So the type is it stored, and for example, copy fields. That will create a new, a new field in the schema, and we can use it right away. Mm, we can also add copy fields. Uh, it's even easier. We, can spec we specify the source. And we specify the des destination fields, so if you in need of additional copy fields, that's, that's very easy with managed schema. However, remember that uh, without reindexing, the data won't be changed because you need to reindex the data for the mm, changes to be visible. Because one thing is modifying the schema, other thing is providing the information for Solar to see it. One, one of the things that I think is very important is choosing the right directory. The, di the Lucene directory is an mm, interface or an abstraction layer for Lucene and Solar to mm, read and write indices. Uh, we have a few uh, out there that I think it's good to know which one to choose uh, for our deployment. First of all, we have the standard directory, which is good for local development or any standard usage, not high uh, indexing, not very, not too much querying, uh, but still it exists. We have the simple FS directory, which is good for single threaded access. It uses a Java random access files to access the index, 
but you will have problems with uh, multi-threaded access to it, and it will be not uh, not great. The performance will de degrade with multiple threads. We have a new uh, new IOFS director which uses the new IO package of Java. However, it's not uh, it's nice when it comes to Linux environment on the or Unix ones, but it's not advisable to use it uh, on Windows because Windows JVM has a bug a long-lasting bug that prevents the new, AO, new AOFS to work properly. We have the MMAP, MMAP directory, which is the one that I would recommend to use uh, for most deployments, uh, that uses the MMAP call to share the cache of the, op of the operating system and the Lucene cache. So a single call to Lucene doesn't result in a call to a cache, to a f to cache of the operating system, and uh, basically, no, uh, there are not two caches, but a single one, and uh, um, Lucene can use it. And there is an NRT caching directory, which can pack another directory, uh, uh, build it like a factory, and it allows us to speed up some things, like caching some segments files, to uh, speed up reading and indexing when uh, near real time is needed. Finally, the RAM directory is a volatile directory that you can use to have your index uh, in a memory, but it's not mm, suggested to use it in the production environment. However, if you need, for example, unit testing or anything like that, it can be used because uh, it doesn't write files on the disk, it's all in memory. Mm, in order to configure di uh, the directory factory in Solar, we need a single entry in the a solar config file, so the directory factory name, name with directory factory and the class, the proper class for the factory for solar. For example, for an NRT caching directory, it's solar NRT caching directory factory. Similar, the rest. Now, the other thing I would like to talk about is segments. What are segments? Lucene index is actually built up of small fragments, well, not always small, but uh, fragments that uh, composes it. Mm, whenever you flash the data to disk, Lucene creates a new segment. A new segment that is write once and read many times. Uh, this is why updates can't be done in Lucene, at least for now. Uh, the proper updates, you can't re re mm, modify the segment once it, once it is written. You can only put information about delete, the deleted documents, a small file. So what, however, you can imagine that when indexing and committing data, more and more segments are uh, created during time. And this degrades performance of querying. The more segments, the less per query performance, uh, the less the query performance will be. So Lucene has something like the merging, uh, so-called merging. And what it does, it just combines the segment after certain thresholds are met. Uh, how segments uh, merging works in Lucene. First of all, uh, the segments are divided into levels. So uh, so-called merge policy uh, chooses which segments are candidates to merge. For then segment merge is done. Lucene, based on the merge factor and the merge policy, chooses, for example, in this example we'll have the A and B segment will be merged and rewritten to a segment called F. The C will be left and the E will be again merge together. Of course, this is a simplified view only, uh, uh, but you get the idea of how it works. From many segments, less, uh, less, as, less are created. You can force merge by calling optimize, but again, it's not advisable because uh, if you merge all your segments into a single one, all the caches, not only the Solar and Lucene one will, be, will need to be refreshed, but also the operating system one. And then, uh, that requires I.O. operations, which are usually costly. Uh, we can control merging. In order to do that, we can tune the merge policy. We choose which, how, how many segments, when they are uh, merged. We have a merge scheduler. Merge scheduler, the two types of merge scheduling. One is the concurrent one, the default one, which uh, merges the segment in a second thread, a new thread, not the one you are indexing with. And we have uh, 
serial scheduler that merges uh, the segments in the, in the same thread uh, the indexing was happening. We have a merge factor property in solar config that allows us to uh, mm, control how many segments will be, basically. I, for example, if we have a merge factor of uh, 10 mm, and we have segments of uh, 1,000 documents, then 10 segments of 1,000 documents will be merged into one, one segment of 10,000 documents. Then when 10, to 10 segments of 10,000 documents will be uh, present, it will be again merged to a uh, single segment of 100,000 documents. Mm, the good thing to remember about, uh, about merge factor is the higher the merge factor, the uh, more performant indexing will be because the less merges will be done. However, the less, uh, for example, for the, default middle, uh, the default merge factor for solar is 10. If you would uh, increase it to 25, you will see that the indexing is faster. But uh, query performance will be uh, slower. The queries will be slower. If you would set the merge factor, for example, to 3, you would see less segments, but index uh, and the queries will be faster. However, the uh, indexing will be slower because of the merging happening. Of course, if you have very performant disk like the solid state drives, it's not that. Depends on the indexing, but usually uh, merges can be painful uh, when indexing too much data. And of course, we can tune the merge policy. Uh, I won't show you the parameters, but uh, we can tune and choose uh, the ones that we want to have. For, ho for the whole reference about the merging, please go to this wiki of Apache and the, the official documentation released by Apache. Uh, it's quite nicely uh, described there. Mm. There is another thing. Mm. Imagine you have multiple data sources that are writing to solar uh, at the same time. And you don't want each of those applications to commit after every document because you have CMS system that puts, uh, for example, data of uh, d written by users. You have some kind of users uh, putting the data there for blog posts or anything like that. That's why in Solar we have so-called auto commit. Mm, there are two types of auto commits. Uh, there is a hard auto commit, so the standard auto commit uh, present in Solar and we have a soft auto commits. They both about visibility and durability. Why durability and visibility? The hard auto commit flushes your data to disk, while the soft auto commit is there to refresh the view of the index and, op and reopen the index searcher, so-called index, index searcher object. In order to configure it, um, we have a few parameters. In solar config, we change uh, the configuration, we can put the max time and max maximum time a document can live in memory before it is flushed, uh, maximum number of documents that can be uh, stored in memory in, uh, before the flashing happens, and we can specify if we want to reopen the searcher during a hard commit. Usually with uh, near real time indexing and searching, you want to avoid mm, having the uh, auto co hard auto commit reopening the searcher because uh, during flashing um, many operations are done, new segments are being created and uh, you want to avoid open. Uh, the one thing also to remember is that auto commit clears your transaction log, transaction which uh, can grow if you don't commit uh, oftenly, the hard auto commit. In addition to that we have the soft auto commit um, which is only there to refresh the view. For example, in this configuration, you can see that uh, we allow auto commit to uh, have the data for 15 seconds, uh, and every 15 seconds if a document came, uh, it will be, uh, those, those documents will be flashed to disk. However, with the soft auto commit, we specify a sing one second, which means that every second, a new searcher will be opened, and the documents will be visible for searching. Because if you won't open the new searcher, the documents that were indexed won't be visible for your application. So that's, that's what happens. You usually want, uh, in the, the, usually want in most applications uh, to have the data uh, available for searching right away. You, at least a second or for maybe 10 seconds right after they were sent to solar. That's, that's normal. 
However, you have to choose the right parameters for your system because not all systems will be able to, will be capable of uh, uh, autosoft commit uh, for one second. It depends on your query rate, on your indexing rate, and it's good to have some kind of monitoring, which we'll talk about, uh, to see what you are capable of in, in terms of you when uh, your cloud, your cloud uh, deployment. SOAR also has um, caches which serves different purposes. We have a filter cache for uh, filter queries. We have a query result cache uh, for uh, queries for uh, queries with the queue parameter, the uh, sorting and the uh, result window. Uh, we have the document cache which qu caches the documents of the returned by queries. They're all configurable. Uh, one thing to remember is that they are refreshed with index searcher reopening. So if you reopen your index searcher often, the index, the caches will be invalidated. Uh, the, sometimes it may be uh, very good to even turn off caching because with very high indexing uh, throughput, you'll end up warming up caches uh, too long and because of that, your performance will degrade. But uh, for normal deployments where the data is not that, uh, the, day, the indexing throughput is not that high, uh, uh, caches are nice to use and uh, they will speed up your queries. Now, we have our clusters uh, uh, managed, right? Now we need something to uh, see what is happening in the cluster. Man, you want to be uh, notified about all the health issues of your cluster. You want to be notified about nodes failing, shards failing, indexing failing, out of memory. You want to f know where to fight fires, right? Because you don't want to wake up in the morning and see that uh, all night your application was not available at all because something broke. It happens, even with solar. Uh, you want to see uh, how your tuning, the tuning you've done uh, uh, is affecting your cluster. That's another thing that monitoring can help you. You want to see the I.O. statistics, you want to see the disk statistics, not only disk, but also the memory, the operating system statistics. Finally, you want to do the, for example, A-B testing and monitoring can help you there because you want, you deploy some changes and you see, okay, we've deployed the change here and now we see the difference between cluster behavior before the change and after the change. And finally, you want to be alerted about all the things that can happen, that happened or happened and uh, which you should be aware of. For example, failing, uh, some anomaly like the peak of re requests or indexing peak that usually mean, if you don't expect it, that something wrong is happening or is going to happen. What you should pay attention to when monitoring? First of all, uh, the help index uh, shard health, how many documents, if they are failing, what's happening. Uh, you need to be paying attention to all the indices uh, <coughs> statistics like the disk, disk spaces and stuff. Uh, you need to pay attention to your uh, JVM and how, you, how your JVM works, like the garbage collector, uh, the memory, how, how it performs, if there are no issues. Of course, the memory is very important because if you run out of memory, your soul re will be not operable. Uh, the disk, if it's too much for a single node, if the nodes are still able to run uh, and serve queries and uh, index your data in a way you want, it to, you want them uh, to index. So now, with the cluster state, uh, I think that you should at least monitor the health, the status of shards and the replicas how the shards are placed among the cluster if, the, if they are evenly uh, distributed and of course failing nodes because when nodes failed uh, your cluster performance degrade. Mm, then uh, there are index related metrics when you indexed, when you index marked data like the log data or mm, uh, tweets for example, uh, then the indexing throughput will, pay, you should pay attention to the index throughput the document distribution among the shards because you want the documents, in general cases, you want the documents to be evenly distributed among all the shards in the cluster. You need the IO subsystem metrics so you see if there is no uh, 
swapping or anything like that because swapping will uh, degrade the performance. And of course, you need to pay attention to merging because uh, it's usual that you have to adjust it to your case. Mm, there are search-related metrics you should pay attention to, like the count of your, the number of queries that are coming to your, each of your nodes, the latency of the queries to see how your clients, if you, have, so if you are exposing your application to the clients, and you usually do, uh, what's the latency of the page that is being d displayed. How, uh, how the queries are distributed among nodes. So uh, if they're uh, not hitting a single node, they're evenly distributed among the cluster. And of course, the anom anomalies and spikes, if you see something like this, then probably something bad is, is happening. Uh, the next thing is the mem uh, memory and garbage collection. Uh, you need to know the heap details uh, because you, know, you need to know how your application works in case this application we talk, we talk talk about solar. You need to know the pool sizes and the pool utilization and the garbage collection count and time. You, need to, you probably want to have the uh, garbage collector run uh, more frequently but uh, with lower times because if you run it less frequently and you hit a stop the world event, your solar will start, stop to respond uh, just as is. And finally, the <laughs> OS-related metrics like CPU details and the corresponding load, the I.O. activity and the network usage. I will show you an example of the network usage and why we pay attention to it while monitoring. There are a few tools that you can use to monitoring. The first one, the out of the box one, is the solar administration panel. It's, it's quite simple but mm, can be used. You can see the memory usage, statistics of your shards, uh, of course, statistics for the given handlers and caches. All the information is available on solar administration panel. You can also use JMX. Uh, if you add this to your solar config, it's by default, it's by default present. So uh, if you look at the default solar config, and if you run solar, the, for example, with the parameter comsun management JMX remote, you can connect it to it using any JMX, uh, any tool that can read JMX metrics, for example, JConsole, and you can read all the information from uh, that's related to solar, like the heap, uh, threads, classes, and of course, all the attributes of all the, the solar things that are exposing J JMX statistics, the bins, like the handlers, the caches, and all of that. You can see the number uh, number of uh, requests, the median of request time, and stuff like that. But that's not all. Uh, you would like to have the data persistent somewhere because you usually don't sit before, before your computer 24, hour, 24 hours and look at the statistics if something is uh, not right. That's why there are tools like SPM, for example, our tool that allows you to read all the, the, all the data that is that we think that's relevant to the uh, not only per performance but the stability of the cluster. So you, do, you can have a dashboards that monitor your uh, request rate, query, query caches, CPU details, and so on. There are also other tools like the open source Ganglia, uh, f which you can use with Solar, the new Relic, a commercial product uh, of our competitors, and the Ops view. There are also info information how to how to plug them in. However, uh, we are concentrated, not uh, we are talking about solar, so we have a product concentrated on solar and solar cloud that will monitor the things that we think are uh, especially important. I would like to show you, uh, going to the end, to three examples of where monitoring is uh, give us an information uh, or, or what was happening. Those are real uh, examples of real clients, SPM, uh, metrics and uh, their problems. Uh, this is a thing that uh, one of the clients said that uh, in solar logs they see that the queries are very fast, usually 10 milliseconds, maximum of, the, of 100 milliseconds. But their application waited for the queries to, uh, to, for the results to arrive for about one minute. What is happening? I don't know. We took a look at our monitoring. Every, everything that can uh, monitor network throughput will, will do. 
It's not only that you have used uh, SPM, but uh, we use it. And we've looked that on 100 megabits uh, network, a single node transmitted more than 30 megabits per second. Well, they had 10 nodes, and imagine that the network throughput was just too low for it. So Solar was able to query the indices very fast, but the data was not being able to be sent to the client. To be honest, they were uh, getting very big faceting result, and each query returned about 5 to 10 megabytes of XML. So that was quite high. After they cut off the fa some of the faceting results, the queries were running smoothly and everyone was happy, including me. Uh, the next thing was uh, the warm-up times. Uh, when the caches are warmed up, Sora needs to do something. We've got a message that something is going wrong because after each commit, they have uh, mm, high load with uh, queries running very slow and stuff like that. And we looked and uh, we've noticed that the warm-up time for caches was 25 minutes uh, after a single commit. Imagine that if you have uh, commits running uh, after uh, one minute uh, between commits and if you have a searcher reopen, uh, searcher warmed for 25 minutes, uh, you'll have to wait. The load is going high, CPU is stressed out, the queries will, be, will just not run perfectly as you would like them. And finally, when it comes to caches, you would like to avoid evictions. Evictions is when uh, the cache is full, you don't have the data, uh, you don't have uh, the space to add new entries, and you need to throw away some of them, some of the entries to add new ones. This, w this is what you want to avoid, because uh, if in order to throw away some data from the cache, Solar needs additional CPU cycles, and that's where performance degrades. So again, we've used our monitoring to look at it, and uh, we figured out what was happening. We are hiring, as usual, uh, if you want. Uh, you can reach me uh, at Twitter or at Sematex Mail. You can reach us if you want to try SPM for Solar. There is a discount code. It's free for 30 days, and then you can use the discount. And finally, if you want to talk to us, come to our booth. Thank you very much.